The scene opens with Eddie Brock falling through a dark, abstract space. A disembodied voice narrates his descent, describing it as a hidden reflection of the human world. Eddie, betrayed by those he trusted, plummets towards an uncertain fate. The narrator highlights the frequency of his falls and his desperate need for help. A flashback reveals promises from Malene to lighten Eddie's burden and Cassidy offering to help him return to normal. However, they seem wary of Eddie's transformed state. Even his son, Dylan, appears conflicted. Eddie's fall ends abruptly. He lands with a heavy thud, transformed into a rage-fueled monster called Bedlam. His memories are gone, replaced by raw anger. The narrator describes Bedlam's popularity among the locals who call him fresh meat. Techno demons approach Bedlam, hoping to use his life force. Although less numerous than other threats in Limbo, they are highly dangerous. A metallic hand reaches out to a demon who readily accepts it, only to be crushed. The narrator explains techno demons drain and convert their victims. They can even infect symbiotes, as evidenced by the metal overtaking Bedlam's arms. However, Eddie's bond with the symbiote is different. Null's symbol flashes in his eyes, signifying his power to resist. Bedlam unleashes a blinding light, forcing the remaining demons to flee. They recognize the mark of the king in black and fear his immense power. The scene shifts to another part of Limbo. A voice wonders about the commotion and reveals the ruler, Darkoth, a flying death demon wielding a powerful sword. Briefly, Bedlam overpowers Darkoth, but in another possible future, Darkoth defeats him with a single slash. The narrative highlights the unpredictable nature of Limbo, where past and future can intertwine. Bedlam, empowered by the symbiote, can access these alternate timelines. Memories of the Garden of Time and his attack on Dylan resurface. Bedlam chooses to confront Darkoth, leaping into the predestined outcome. In one version, he uses the broken pieces of the Soul Sword to kill Darkoth. In another, he's critically injured by the sword, causing the symbiote to abandon him and seek a new host. Due to its proximity, the symbiote bonds with Darkoth, who desperately tries to escape Limbo. He stumbles upon a stepping disc and escapes to Asgard, leaving the Soul Sword and a leaderless Limbo behind. Meanwhile, Eddie continues his descent, now surrounded by darkness and liquid. The narrator ponders how much further he can fall. Eddie eventually emerges from the liquid, having fallen all the way to the narrator, a disembodied venom hand. The hand explains Eddie has reached the path of the magician. Eddie walks forward, unsure of himself, but determined. The narrator details the two types of magic, white magic, associated with purity, and black magic, focused on manipulating the world itself. He finally reaches his destination, a giant, flaming, venom hand. It emphasizes Eddie's need for help. As Eddie approaches, the hand reveals he has arrived at the UN Beyond, the true heart of the symbiotes and Eddie's former home. The hand clarifies that this is not a throne room, but an engine room, a vast mechanical landscape. It asks Eddie what work he needs done. Eddie, desperate for information, inquires about his son's well-being. The hand acknowledges Eddie's concern for Dylan, a surprising development considering Eddie's recent memory loss. This concern highlights the enduring bond between father and son. Eddie begs for confirmation of Dylan's safety. The hand confirms Dylan is unharmed and even offers a glimpse of him using the Venom symbiote. Overwhelmed by what he sees, Eddie demands answers. However, the hand reminds him he only has four questions remaining. Eddie reveals his first question, how to stop Meridius. The hand, sensing Eddie's feigned ignorance, reminds him that he already knows the answer, referencing his connection to the symbiote and Dylan. Eddie acknowledges his willingness to go to any lengths, even reaching the Garden of Time. Memories of the Garden flood back to Eddie. He describes it as a soulless, plastic prison built from the corpses of other symbiotes. The hand ponders if this is how Eddie perceives it, because it was his crime. A horrifying realization dawns on Eddie. He has unwittingly taken on Null's role, becoming the king in black. The narrator reveals that Null is considered worse than evil, the embodiment of unbeing. Eddie, seeking to empower the symbiotes, became their king, unknowingly ensuring their obedience.